Hello and welcome to another video by Asia and David from Pure Electric. In this video I just want to have a quick chat about safe isolation which I hope everyone can see is a passion of mine. I really feel that uh, electricians should be safe, I think we should look professional, um, nobody should be getting electric shocks, most definitely at work. Um, apprentices also need to be safe as well and I'm, I'm going to be campaigning for apprentices to get a safe isolation kit from, from day dot basically. So as soon as they start their apprenticeship, you know, they should be getting safe isolation kit straight away, especially if they're being left on a job alone to work unaided or, um, you know, even changing sockets. That, that circuit that they're working on should be locked off at all times. OK, we should be keeping apprentices safe and we should be teaching them good habits. And I know that this isn't happening because the failure rate for the AM2 on safe isolation is so high because apprentices just are not doing it. Okay? And when you talk to them about it, they all admit that they're not doing it. Their companies aren't great at doing it. Nobody seems to want to do it. I've even had one guy that said that he was told that if he got his safe isolation kit out, they would throw him off site. You know, there's a massive problem where safe isolation is concerned at the moment. Obviously, I'm not going to mention any names. Um, I can't help feeling that it's also to do with the way that safe isolation is delivered at college. So, for instance, when you're at college, you're taught to uh, identify the circuit. So that's just by switching a light bulb on. OK, and there is a problem with this LED lamp. It needs to go back, but I needed something. Um, you're told just to switch the lamp on. Go to the consumer unit, which is nicely labelled up, and we all know in the real world that that is not, that just doesn't happen. Um, sometimes they're not even labelled at all. Okay, so what do you do then? So a lot of apprentices don't even know that other kits available uh, to them. You'll then talk to seek permission, switch the circuit off, and then you perform safe isolation. Okay, so proving unit. Voltage indicator that's the GS38. Test the supply, prove that it's dead. Obviously, with it all locked off, I should have pointed that out as well. There should be a lock on this. Um, I do have a range of locks here and you know go through that system. I do have a video by the way to prove that I know how it's done. Um, why are we not teaching apprentices to locate the circuit? Switch the supply to locate the circuit okay it is definitely that one but why are we not then plugging in a fuse finder like this martindale elite 6 fd 650r which is my own personal one i've had this for years so it may even be an old model old model now i don't know but all i now need to do is put this on to find i go to the uh, consumer unit in question I hold this on the breaker that I think it is, and when I get the strongest signal, I press the button. It's that one. Yep, okay. Now I would safely lock it off, and the light's gone out. I know that this is definitely the circuit, no guesswork involved whatsoever. OK. Why is that not being taught in college? We we do teach this at the college where I work. OK, um, we have a um, socket and C version of this. But what's the point in teaching that to apprentices if it's not in their AM2 test? Because I don't want to teach them, for instance, to do it this way. And then they get to the AM2 centre and there's not this isn't available to them. All of a sudden they're scratching their head, looking at it, looking at the assessor, confused as to what to do, because this isn't how they've been shown. Um, so I definitely think there's something more that needs to be done there. I mean, with the amount of kit that's available now, um, safe isolation needs to move on. I still feel like it's back in the, the 1990s and you know, it needs to come into the 21st century, definitely. Another example, for instance, for safe isolation, and I would love to get somebody's thoughts on this, is I've got here a TIS 859, okay? And this particular tester, for instance, has this 
RCD button. And what that does is it leaks 30 milliamp of current down the, um, the CPC, which then creates an imbalance in the RCD, the RCD trips out. Now, if you've got RCDOs, then that will trip out an individual circuit, okay? Which then will help us to identify the circuit. So why aren't we teaching that to apprentices? Obviously, it won't work with a single, fa uh, single RCD board or a dual RCD board. You need individual RCDOs, but that's, that takes out the guesswork. I could plug this in. So again, for this, I'm using the TIS 859. I can plug that into the live, plug that into the CPC, switch it on. I've got voltage, press the RCD button. The RCD, the well, it's an RCBO in this instant, the RCBO is tripped out. Obviously, I should have asked for permission before I did that, but how much easier is that than going to a consumer unit and wondering what's going on? I mean, this is nicely labelled, but this is not a real life situation. You're going to a 20 way, 30 way board, nothing's labelled, it's all over the place, nothing makes sense anymore. You either get out your fuse finder if you've got one, why can't you use one of these? Happy days. I, I, I don't understand it, okay? I, I, it just beggars belief. So, anyway, I won't ramble on too much, but what are your thoughts? Okay, there's quite a few people out there. Everyone's got an opinion on how things should be done. Now, I'm not looking for any hate mail. I'm not looking for keyboard warriors that want to come in and beat me down for raising this as a concern. However, I do believe that something needs to be said, and I think there's a way forward where, you know, there's manufacturers out there that are pushing the boundaries with technology and coming up with all this great kit, but we are not teaching apprentices how to use it correctly. Um, so, yeah, thoughts, please. Anyone that's interested, please get in touch. Anyone that has the ability to make a difference, please get in touch. There's quite a few of us. It's not just me that thinks this as well. There's quite a few people that want to uh, change the way things are done. And ultimately, we just want to keep people safe, okay? Especially apprentices. So I hope you're all well. Take care. I'll speak soon.